Kelly from the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau. Today we're here at the Settlers Inn with Chef Ben. He's going to be making a Pocono Mountains, a Northern Pocono Mountains fall recipe for us today. What are we making today? Thanks. Um, so today we're going to be making a golden and red beet tartare with a sweet chili and fennel vinaigrette. We're also going to be making a pork chop with a pistachio cream. Two really good things. So okay, well, let's get into it. Let's jump in. So our sweet chili vinaigrette starts with garlic cloves, which we're going to fresh chop into it here. We're going to put three garlic cloves in. Chop them real nice and small. So what was the inspiration for this dish? Well, Settlers Inn especially, we love to use a lot of local farmers. We use many ones in the area. A couple notable ones are Dave Nonamaker in Honesdale, uh, John De Pasquale of Lato Soup Farm in Honesdale as well. But we also use uh, a lot of things from Mountain Dale Farm in New York, and uh, there's a lot of other farms too. So what we try to do is find what they're growing um, and make dishes around that. So we have the garlic in the, the bowl right now. We're going to add a quarter cup of ground fennel seed that was toasted and then ground. We're going to add two cups of Thai sweet chili sauce. One cup of rice vinegar. And three cups of olive oil, pure olive oil. So we have that in there. We're going to add just a couple pinches of salt and pepper. And then stir it very well. Emulsify. Okay, so once our vinaigrette is done, now it's time to chop up the beet. So, uh, beet tartare is a play on a very classic dish called beef tartare. And in beef tartare, the raw beef would be chopped up very, very small. So it would be very, very tender. So in our play on it, we're going to take a red beet and a golden beet, which we have here. And we're going to also dice them very, very small. So we're going to take off the ends. So is this going to be on the fall menu for the Settlers Inn? Yes, absolutely. Both the dishes that we're doing today are going to be on the fall menu. Awesome. We're super excited to have that. It's going to start October 8th. October 8th. We'll start our fall okay. menu here at Settlers Inn. Very excited. So we're going to Again, dice this golden beet very, very small. Another little bit of that. I love the fresh local ingredients. Oh, they're the best. And you know, when you get stuff straight from farms, there's so many farmers markets around in the Poconos. It's just, it's a world of difference in the ingredients versus what you can get from a supermarket. So we've got our golden beef done. Come off the side just for a second. And then we're gonna dice up our red beet. Do the same exact thing with that, take off the end. Now these beets prior to me dicing them here were roasted and then we peeled them. Roasted them with olive oil, salt, pepper, herbs. Are there any specific ingredients or flavors that are popular this fall that you're going to be using a lot on the menu? Yeah, you know, you think of a lot of root vegetables in fall. You think of sweet potatoes. You think of especially butternut squash. We have one farmer that grows literally a ton, a literal ton of squash for us. 
every single year, butternut squash. Oh, that's neat. And every year we have a competition to see if we can beat last year of how much he, <laughs> he grows. But last year was right around 2,000 pounds. Hopefully we can beat it this year. Yeah, yeah. we're looking for it. We're <laughs> looking for it. So butternut squash is a big one um, because it grows so well in this area. But there's also some that are less obvious but are also really well grown in this area. One being bok choy. And uh, Mountain Dell Farm grows a lot of bok choy for us and it just flourishes this time of year. Especially, if you can believe it or not, after the first frost, certain greens get really, really like sweet. Yeah. So. That's interesting. So those are the kind of things you try to focus on. This particular beet has great color, so we love to see that. Here, we're going to clumsily put this in the bowl. Okay. This off. So now we get to the kind of the fun part. So now we have our vinaigrette done. And we have our beets chopped up. We're going to toss a little bit of the vinaigrette in with each one of the beets. And we'll emulsify that vinaigrette. We'll put a little bit in each, each beet here. And then we're gonna to start to plate our dish. Oh, we have such great events coming up here in the fall. So I'd say the most fall-like event we have going on is the storytelling dinner on October 29th, where we, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. But okay. So first we're gonna plate the, um, the golden beets into the bottom of this ring mold here on the plate. And then after we get the, the golden beets in there, we're going to do the red beets on top. I do it in this order because I like the border of colors then it gets against the black plate because the golden beets are a little bit lighter so they show off against the black plate a little bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to use our spoon to kind of tap this down and if we're lucky it'll stay in that shape after we unmold it. So then we're going to finish our dish with a couple of things here. So we have and the other thing in fall that's big is sometimes pre pre preserved ingredients. Yeah. So summer you have a lot of tomatoes, but usually towards the end of the season, um, you run out of well, things you can do with tomatoes. You get a little tired of eating tomatoes, and then your garden just blows up with a bunch of tomatoes. So um, we make preserves, we make tempanades, different things. This happens to be a tomato tempanade that we make um, to use some of that late season thing. So it's make tomato tempanade there. Great idea. Thank you. And then, um, also with beef tartare, since this is a play on a classic dish, a classic garnish to that would be a little bit of raw onion. So we're gonna use a little bit of raw onion on this side. Kind of play with that idea. Very nice. And then we have a couple of uh, other fall things that we wanna put with it. Um, the first is here we have sweet potato crisps. So these, we just peeled the sweet potato and then we kept going with the peeler and just peeled off a couple and then fried them in a fryer at uh, 275 degrees, and that's important because if you go up to 350, you're going to burn. So a couple of those. Good tip. And a couple of these pea shoots because they're beautiful on this side. And then there you have the fi finished dish with one last fall accompaniment that it needs. Uh, so in here we have a green apple. Drum. Apples are one of my favorite things in fall. And you can get them, I don't know, and you can get them all over the place. So we made a little little foam out of green apples. Oh, wow. It's a nice finish, and it's a nice uh, palate cleansing element of the dish. So there's that one. Good job, that looks good. Thank you, thank you. So you were asking about our, our storytelling dinner. So back to our storytelling dinner. Right, right, yes. Upcoming events in the fall, that's what they say. Yep, storytelling dinner. We're going to um, literally fill all our, our entire place with pumpkins, our entire uh, restaurant and the end with carved pumpkins from all different uh, 
illustrators in the area. We actually partner with Highlights. They come over and bring some illustrators. And um, together we put together a bunch of these car pumpkins and all sorts of scenes and uh, all sorts of different displays. We have a guy that's been coming for 30 years oh, and wow. he makes a, a picture of the Settlers Inn on a pumpkin. Wow, that's great. So yeah, it's going to be very cool. cool. Okay, so moving on to our last dish here, we're going to do a pork chop with a pistachio cream and fresh figs because figs go, although they are summer, they go into the fall a little later than a lot of the fall, uh, the summer fruits, so I love to use them in the fall. And we're going to start with our potatoes for this dish. And I got the idea for these potatoes from our partner, my partner Justin Genslinger. They're called Brava potatoes, and Brava in Italian just means good. That's all it means. <laughs> so he's like, but these are really good. So we Literally. call them Brava potatoes. So we have a, a diced up Yukon gold potato that um, we warmed up before and blanched. And then we have a very simple sriracha aioli here. And we're gonna simply toss those together. And that makes them, that makes them good, you know what I mean? Makes them Brava. But they go really well with the dish because the figs have a sweetness to them. Yeah. And a little bit of spice is gonna cut that so well. So again, we're gonna put these in a rig mold. If you're ever adventurous enough to try this kind of stuff at home and you want to make something kind of look like it was in a ring mold but you don't have ring molds because you know most homes don't, um, you can always use measuring cups. They work just as well. So, we we'll put the Brava potatoes in there. What about cookie cutters? Oh, you're a genius. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. Okay, so we have the. Uh, our sauce has been working here as we've been cooking. This is one cup of pistachios simmered in two cups of heavy cream with a pinch of salt and pepper. And that's all it is. It's very, very simple. By the way, we are right by the garden outside of the Settlers Inn. Um, beautiful place. They have flowers that they change seasonally. Okay, so all we've done is simmer them down until it's about one cup of cream left. And then we're going to use an immersion blender here and we're just going to puree it up. Try not to make a mess. We're trying to leave some chunks of the pistachios in there because they're a nice texture. We don't want whole pistachios because that's I really want to have. Okay. Have that where we want. Okay. So once we've got the sauce done, we'll continue plating it here. These are another fun thing in fall. Um, we've got some baby carrots that we roasted of all different colors. There's a number of different farms in the area that grow these. Um, Ant Hill Farm in Homesdale usually has them. Plate a couple of those on there. And then it's time for our pork chop. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put our pork chop on there. Now for our sauce pistachio cream. Now you're talking about the flowers in our garden. One of the flowers that we grow are these begonias. They're pretty, right? Yeah, beautiful. But they're also edible. Oh, which really? Which is cool. Yeah, right? It's very cool. There's actually a lot of edible flowers out there. Interesting. And we grow a lot of them here on site, and we use them to garnish our dinner. So the last thing we're going to put on here is a couple of figs. And then we'll have lunch. Pretty great lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Could do worse. Could do worse. <laughs> there you got it. Thank you so much for everything today. Everything Thank looks you. good. Did you get a nice close up of that one? Perfect. Money shot there. Definitely. Is there anything else that you want to mention before we head out? We do have a couple of wine dinners coming up. We have one here at Settlers Inn on September 23rd. And then we also have one at Glass, our other restaurant, on October 14th. That's going to focus on some foods from California, uh, where I used to go. All right, sounds good.
good. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming by. You did a great job. If you guys want to see more of the area, see more of the garden in the back and the hotel, be sure to tune into our Snapchat and um, Instagram live stories at Pocono Tourism. And we also have an upcoming blog on how you can make this at home. So be sure to stay tuned on our Facebook and Twitter uh, for more information on that. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good one.